grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. They went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath day, Jesus entered the synagogue and was teaching. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority, and not as the scribes. And immediately there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And right there, lots of modern hearers have a hard time relating to the gospel. We can relate to the gospel message when Jesus talks about someone who is sick, someone who is a poor, who's poor, someone who's oppressed, someone who's grieving. But when we talk about someone who is possessed, possessed by a demon, well, for the modern here, that's the stuff of movies. The old Exorcist series of movies. It, it's the stuff of stories and legends and Hollywood. It's nothing we can relate to. It's strange and out of the ordinary for us. And yet, oddly enough, it seems to have been perfectly normal for the people in Jesus' day. Notice that, that after Jesus, in our Gospel lesson, casts out the demon, the people react with amazement, but not at the demon. They're not at all shocked or surprised by the presence of a person who's possessed by a demon. No, for them, and they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? A new teaching with authority. They were more shocked and amazed at the fact that Jesus taught differently than they were amazed at the presence of of a person possessed by a demon. Just really quickly as an aside, so you understand uh, <clears throat> what do they mean by a, a new teaching with authority. The scribes, when they taught, they always quoted somebody else. As this rabbi once said, or that scribe once said, pointing back to somebody else. Jesus didn't do that. He just spoke to the people. He didn't feel the need to quote someone, cite another source because he had authority. He didn't need to rely on someone else. And that, of all things, was what amazed them. The fact that he wasn't giving bibliographical citations with his preaching, that amazed them. Not the fact that there was a person possessed by a demon. It's something that we can't relate to. At least, that's what we think. But the reality is, it's not entirely true. No, the idea of a demon possessing someone, afflicting someone, that's beyond anything that we can relate to, at least in my experience. But people today are just as afflicted and oppressed. It's not by some demon whose name is Legion. But people in our world today are afflicted and oppressed. And it's a whole host of evils that does it. There's grief. Grief that so consumes a person that all they feel is pain. There's anxiety. Anxiety that is so overwhelming. There are people who cannot leave their houses. There's fear. People who walk around terrified that something bad is going to happen. And they spend all their time kind of scanning the room, looking for exits, looking for dangers. There's addiction. So many people in our world today are afflicted and oppressed by addiction. And the list of addictions, well, how long have you got? The common ones, drugs, alcohol, sex, gambling. That's just the foremost common. All these things and so many more afflict and oppress God's people today. Doubt, fear, grief, anxiety, addiction, sickness, disease, the
the list goes on and on and on. And no, it may not be some demonic force causing it, but it's just as terrifying, overwhelming, and all-consuming. Yes, God's people today are afflicted and oppressed. And that's why Jesus came. We see that in the synagogue. Jesus comes to bring freedom for his people. Freedom from sin, death, and the devil. And so Jesus starts right there that day in the synagogue, casting out the demon. But notice, the demon doesn't want to go, or at least doesn't want to go quietly. The person who's afflicted by this demon, when Jesus casts it out, the man screams and convulses before the demon finally let's go. Because the demon doesn't want to let go. But still, Christ comes to free his people. And so his people will be free. That same freedom, that same liberation from all that afflicts and oppresses, Christ Jesus brings today for his people. Driving out fear and doubt and anxiety. Hatred and addiction, grief and pain. Now, I'm not saying that he miraculously makes all the physical ailments of his people go away. But Christ Jesus gives peace to his people, even in the midst of earthly afflictions, and drives out all that would oppress and afflict you. There's just one little hitch, one little complication. I mentioned that the demon didn't want to let go. Didn't want to let go of the person that it was afflicting, it was oppressing. Well, for so many people who are afflicted and oppressed, they don't want to let go either. The person who has lived with grief for so long that they're consumed by it knows nothing but the grief and can't see a way to function without it. And so they cling to it. It's the same for the person going through addiction without whatever it is that they're addicted to, they don't feel normal. And so they cling to that addiction, don't want to let it go. I actually knew someone in college who was addicted to marijuana. It started harmless enough. First semester, they would occasionally smoke a joint. Before the end of their first year, They had to get high just to get out of bed. Just to feel normal. The expression that this person used was wake and bake. Because they needed that to function. So many people in the world today, so many of us who are afflicted and oppressed We cling to those things because it's what we know. Because it gives us a sense of identity. It gives people a sense of normalcy. Well, if I don't have this, how am I going to function? The answer is Christ. For the person who was possessed by that demon. The demon was driven out. Not just that the person could be left listing and aimless, but so that the word of Christ could dwell in them richly. 
you all have actually seen that exact thing take place. Right here at the font. We leave the words out nowadays because it makes people uncomfortable. And no parent likes to hear it, but um, the baptismal rite is an exorcism. And in the church for over a thousand years, actually up until maybe three, four, five hundred years ago at most, baptismal rites included an exorcism. We've actually, in the pastor's book that goes along with our hymnal, there's a rite for baptism with the exorcism in it that drives out the unclean spirit to make way for the Holy Spirit given in baptism. Here at the font, God drives out sin, death, and the devil that lays claim over creation to make way for the gift of the Holy Spirit and the new life that comes in Christ Jesus. And so when Jesus casts the demon out of the man, he's making a place for his word to dwell and abide. And Christ Jesus comes today for his people, for you and for me, and for our whole world with that same release from oppression. That same freedom from affliction. He offers an alternative to the person whose life is consumed by fear, anxiety, doubt, grief, pain. The alternative is him, Christ Jesus. He comes today by his word and in his sacraments to drive out all that would afflict and oppress you and to make way for his spirit to dwell in you richly. Our world is a world right now that has a lot that makes people anxious and fear and doubt and all those other things. But those do not need to hold sway over you. Just as Christ Jesus brought freedom and release from the man afflicted by the demon, so too he comes to you by his cross and passion, by his death and resurrection, He has freed you from sin, death, and the devil. And they no longer have hold over you. Lean on Him. Trust in Him. Abide in Him. When fear or doubt, grief or anxiety, addiction, when anything in this world would afflict or oppress you, turn your eyes from them. Turn your eyes from them and look to Christ Jesus and look to his cross. Because in him, all that would afflict and oppress you is driven out. And in him you are freed. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Who brings you freedom and release. And has given you life everlasting.